Cyberpunk's back. After a long stint of being overshadowed by more realistic stories, the genre has finally exploded back into the gaming industry with renewed interest and hardware to complement it. Many games are seeing modern remakes thanks to the current gen technology, which has been a double-edged sword for some games and really good for others. One series that has felt the sting of modern gaming and is now reborn is Shadowrun, with Shadowrun Returns. So how does the game play mechanically? Shadowrun Returns plays out through a third-person isometric adventure similar to the SNES version. The story package of the game involves your player-created character investigating a fellow runner's murder across the filth-strewn streets of Seattle, runners being the overarching term for mercenaries in this game. Being a Shadowrunner, you are given freedom to build your character however you want, and hire other runners in order to fill gaps in your build. Missions can be completed just by headbutting through combat, or using stats and personality traits to take alternate routes. There are also side missions if you wish to fill your wallet. Combat also plays out like XCOM, where you and your runners take turns in combat using cover, and your tech, magic, or guns in order to defeat corporate suits and other runners. It's very reminiscent of the SNES Shadowrun engine with some elements of the Genesis version's customization. Now while the combat seems similar to XCOM, it's pretty much just exactly XCOM. While the Shadowrun world offers a wide array of abilities, in-game combat is still pretty routine and plays out exactly like XCOM. This isn't a necessarily a bad thing, it's just somewhat unsettling. Hacking is cool in this incarnation since it's far more dynamic. In the SNES game, hacking was basically Minesweeper with some exploration, while in the Genesis it was a goofy third-person battle with anti-hacker software. In Returns, hacking is once again combat-based like in the Genesis, but with more Decker skills to work with, and more varieties in enemies. However, this means that hacking in Returns is just XCOM combat again. I appreciate the developers trying to make the Cyberverse more interesting to mess around with, but Returns lacks a bunch of neat tricks from the SNES game's hacking system that made it really charming. Shadowrun Returns hacking just feels like a glorified Digimon battle. Shadowrun Returns also feels linear at times, but it's clear that harebrained schemes love the original game, so it's not surprising. When the game does get linear, it's very painfully linear, with the illusion of choice always bringing you to one specific outcome rather than offering variety from player choice. You're rarely given any time to enjoy the game world and instead are rushed to finish the mission before being returned back to your main base. You can't really spend time to explore, and if you do, you'll find the game world is very empty. There are almost no meaningful NPCs to interact with, and sometimes there's only a single side quest to do, if that. This lack of exploration and freedom means that the importance of your choices are diminished. No matter what character you try to roleplay as, you'll be stuck down the same path every time. The main meat of a Shadowrun game though is its story, and Shadowrun Returns doesn't disappoint. As mentioned before, the game involves your playable character trying to solve the mystery of their old friend's murder, whether motivated by vengeance, or the 100,000 new yen he offers in his will. From there, the world of Shadowrun opens up with tales of alternate reality addiction, corporate espionage, otherworldly cults, and competing Shadowrunners. The writing has a lot of detail, offering intricate character interactions and body language, along with fleshed out responses for both neutral or build-based dialogue choices. The story is also a great introduction to the Shadowrun universe, offering an easy access view of the game's lore without sacrificing any goofy trivia or other important plot points. While the package plot is well done, it also seems kind of watered down. The problem with writing for a unique character build is that you have to account for all possible scenarios, which means either writing a fat stack of context for every possible outcome in the game, or just diluting the experience to a universal focus point. Unfortunately, Shadowrun Returns drifts towards the latter. Your actions don't have much of an impact. At one point, you're given multiple ways into a junkie den. You can talk to a woman so she gives you her card, buy one off of a different person, intimidate the guard, or beat him up. But all of these options can easily be accomplished regardless of your stats, and they all lead through the same basic path. The difference between taking a card from the woman or intimidating the guard is a single dialogue choice. And there's nothing stopping you from doing both anyways. While there is a stat check for the intimidation route, it is so ridiculously low that it may as well not even exist. Dialogue is either useless or broken. Many times the game will give you multiple options only for all of them to lead to the exact same path, but with a slightly different response. Even worse is when the dialogue actually does change something, but you're given only one chance with no warning. If you refuse to immediately make a deal with someone and instead ask them a question or say you'll think about it, the chance to make the deal may be lost forever. Someone offered to sell me a keycard, but I initially refused. Later, I decided I did want it, 
but there was no way to tell him I changed my mind. I was stuck with this decision with no warning. Shadowrun Returns also feels tamer in comparison. The SNES game had you fighting very grandiose entities like unique totems or corporate dragons. Shadowrun Returns lacks any intimidating corporate or meta world entities until the end points of the game. Its entry level approach to Shadowrun lore both helps and hinders the game's image. The visual design of this game is fantastic. Each area has a great amount of detail that perfectly depicts the Shadowrun universe. The cyberpunk atmosphere is very sleek, with inspirations ranging from the more obvious Blade Runner references, to stuff from Ghost and Shell, and even having some references to Count Zero, a relatively unknown cyberpunk novel. The mystical and spiritual elements mesh really well with the game as well, especially when you're in the slums and see stuff ranging from modern totem graffiti to neon Japanese talismans on trees for good luck. All these little details add up to make the world feel much more unique since the style that defined Shadowrun was its mix of scientific and fantasy elements, and having such subtle but recognizable influences visible in the game reinforces that Shadowrun charm. The game engine for Shadowrun Returns is very odd. For a game built primarily for the PC, it feels shoddy. The game runs at a good frame rate for the most part, even when under some taxing circumstances. However, the engine's shortcomings are when you start messing around with customization. Anytime you try to customize your inventory, or sometimes when you spend karma, the game stutters really hard, and you can visibly see and even hear the choppiness. This may seem like nitpicking, but given the game's genre, the player will be accessing inventory a lot, so they will be all too familiar with the stutter. This is a far bigger problem than one may think because these irksome stutters really destroy the immersion of the game. I'm at a loss as to how such a gross oversight got past the developers because it really feels like a glaring issue that could have been easily corrected. Hopefully a patch in the future will fix it, but for now it's just really dodgy. The game uses a checkpoint system, which is suboptimal. While save scumming is a legitimate problem, the lack of a proper save system means that you'll have to repeat entire sections of the game for even a single mistake. You can play almost perfectly, die just near the end of a battle, and have to start over. Even worse, the checkpoint is made at the start of the level, so if there's a lot of dialogue to go through, you'll need to go through it all over again. There are some other small issues like the cumbersome menu screen, but these were the big ones. Also, people who milled through the Game Creator engine found various mechanics that could have been in the package campaign, but aren't. Which feels somewhat strange, why aren't they there? Overall, Shadowrun Returns is not a bad entry into the game series, but it's rather bittersweet. Despite its technical issues and derivative gameplay, the game is still pleasing for a Shadowrun game, a cyberpunk story, and an RPG. I'd certainly recommend it for one playthrough despite its lack of replayability. Hopefully the campaign creator will increase its lifespan as well, but that'll take some time. It's not the best cyberpunk game out there, but it does enough things right to merit dropping some new yen on it.